Welcome to episode 16 of Renewing the Conversation, a series of interviews where we talk to leading industry professionals and experts about renewable energy and heating with a focus on the home and what challenges face the industry and homeowners. Today we welcome Julian Clark, a homeowner that installed a heat pump earlier this year. Julian tells us what prompted him to switch to an air source heat pump, how he found and selected an installer and how the system is performing for him now. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and please show us your support by giving us a thumbs up. Enjoy the interview. Hi, good morning, Julian. Thank you so much for joining us today. I can see that maybe we've got a few things to discuss with regards to your heat pump. Good morning, good morning. Yes, it's nice to meet you. It's just bloody freezing here. Oh, gosh. So I've got the coat on these air source heat pumps. They just don't work. No, no, they really do. They really do. But let's talk about it. Okay. Oh, that's better. I was getting oh, quite warm. Thanks. Okay, good. You recently installed a heat pump. So I'm really intrigued to know what kind of property you're in and what led you to make that decision. Uh, hi, hi. Yeah. So we, we live in a glass house, believe it or not. Um, we bought the property new, new in 2001. We, we live in rural Worcestershire and uh, it's heated. It was heated by oil. Uh, we're not on the gas main. Uh, we live in a small estate of uh, 50, 50 odd homes. Through a series of activities over the years, um, we've tried to improve the fabric of the building, uh, tried to improve the, the, you know, the, the, the retention. We used to use about 2000 litres of oil a year. The property is about 250 square metres. So we're, we're um, very lucky where we live and about five and a half thousand kilowatt hours of electric a year with a bit of judicious turn that light out <laughs> switch that yeah. off we got the electric usage down to about four and a half thousand kilowatt hours a year we put solar pv in in 2012 and that would be my absolute recommendation to anybody who's got a roof put solar pv in it's the biggest return we've ever had and it keeps paying we, we got in just before the feed, feeding tariff ended we then installed something called a solic 200 which is a, a little electrical diverter that takes the spare electricity and heats the hot water. Um, there's, there's a number of different products out there. That drove our electric usage down to about 2,700 kilowatt hours a year because we were able to, you know, you use the electric when you, you know, rather than putting the dishwasher, the washing machine and the oven on all at the same time, you put one in after the other and, and time things and you use the electricity you're generating. And then we triple glazed the property in 2015. Now you might say, well, that's a bit excessive, but I'll just turn my camera around. And if that's a window, you know, an ordinary size window, mm. we've got 85 of those around the property on one floor. Wow. We're, we're a bungalow. So that's why I say we, we live in a glass house <laughs> and we've got some glass oh. roofs. So we've got, we've got glass roofs in the sitting room and the dining room. So triple glazing for us really ha had a big improvement. With those things, we got our oil usage down to about 1,200 to 1,500 litres a year. It's, it's very difficult to measure because there's no, there's no flow rate on it like you would with a gas. We just top it up every year. We got contacted by, and I'm going to say one of the big electric companies like EDF, to say, would you, have you thought about, a, 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 it's called a bivalent system, which means you keep your oil boiler and then they attach a, a small, I think it was going to be about eight kilowatt air source heat pump. They suggested 80%, 70 or 80% of the time, the air source heat pump would be running to heat the home. The remaining, you know, when it got down to minus two or three centigrade or whatever, then the, the oil boiler would kick in. And that seemed a really good, good idea. So talking to EDF, I said, well, can we have a completely, can you replace the oil boiler and we'll have a, you know, if, if you need, say it's an eight kilowatt system at the moment, uh, power, can we not have a bigger one to, and then throw out the oil boiler completely? And they said, oh, sorry, we don't offer that as a service. So th that's when I started then talking to a number of other installers. And that would be one of my top tips. Don't go to the first one. You have to get a number of quotes like you did with, with, with your beautiful property. It sounds like one of your primary focuses as a homeowner for since the you've time you bought the property. What, what was the year that you bought the property? 2001, February 2001. So since 2001, and how old was the property when you bought it? Oh, it was brand new, brand new. Brand new. So since 2001, it seems like your focus as a homeowner has been to continuously make um, improvements to your the efficiency of your home, whether it's been the insulation oh. or um, draft proofing and all those kind of things. Some people might be watching and thinking that sounds really great and it sounds like you've got the right idea, but how much is that costing? Are you sacrificing holidays to, to triple glaze your home? And so can you just talk about a little bit about, you know, why is that such a, a huge priority to you? What makes, what's, what spurred you on to think like that as a homeowner? And, you know, why is that so important to you? Two things 
Firstly, I work in the IT industry, so I have to sort of be able to justify everything that we do. And secondly, my wife uh, uh, was an accountant. So uh, I, again, I have to turn up with a spreadsheet and explain everything and why we cost justify stuff. But we are lucky to have some you know, m- money available to, it, to, to invest as well. I, I recognize that not ev- maybe everybody could do this. But in a lot of cases, things like putting loft insulation in, that was only a couple of hundred pounds. And the savings would pay for themselves almost instantaneously. The, the justification of putting f- photovoltaic solar panels in they paid for themselves in four and a half years and they're still paying back we have a negative energy bill because of the payback of that we had to replace the oil boiler because it failed uh, previously the air source heat pump interestingly we looked at a range of different options there are different ways of of funding it the government had a had a scheme called green homes grant up until i think april this year and that was a five thousand pound payment up front and then you could claim some additional back called something called the rhi renewable heat incentive so yes i have had to invest money to buy the air source heat pump up front but then i'm getting paid back quarterly uh, and it ends up costing me about the same as that oil boiler did seven years ago and when we look at the running costs It'll be about the same, maybe less. There's, there's been the whole issues about the the energy shortages in the UK, and that that's pushed gas and, oil, and electric prices up. But it's pushed oil prices up even more. So I think you know, with oil about fifty pence a litre, and I'm lucky that I'm still on a, a very good electric tariff. We we will we, we will be. Um, saving on overall. So initially you were approached by EDF uh, or, or somebody like that to come in and basically put a bivalent system oh. in. So that got your you got, that got you intrigued as to, okay, so what is a heat pump and how can I install one in my home? So where did you begin with your research and what did you start to look for? And like, what, what, what was the start of, of looking into this? Oil boiler had failed seven, seven, eight years ago. Not surprisingly, when the thing fails, you've got to get it sorted immediately. Again, there was a nearly, nearly a D-I-V-O-R-C-E then. Because uh, <laughs> it took, it took it, was, it always fails in the middle of winter, doesn't it? And it, 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 these kinds of things, they never fail in yeah. summer. Yeah. And uh, it took two weeks before the engineers could come out and replace it. So we, we were putting the coats and the hats on all the time. The research was very difficult, actually. If you're buying a fridge freezer or a car or a, almost anything else, you can go to which, you can go to car magazine you can um do a check a review and and, and there's comparisons and you know a, a bosch fridge freezer against a Miele one against a indesit one whatever and you can certainly you can f- find but you couldn't i couldn't find much about the benefits of one air source heat pump over another and actually mm-hmm. doing searches via youtube I, that's why i came across you guys research is difficult there isn't a lot of information out there mm-hmm. and except for your home or your car the heating system is the most single most expensive thing I think you invest in. It's the most complicated thing that is in your house, I would suggest, in terms of being correctly designed, correctly installed, and then correctly maintained. So for not to not be able to find much information about it, you end up relying on the plumbers and heating engineers and people coming around giving you quotes and you then asking dumb questions and I'm, I'm very good at asking dumb questions you have to be talking to the engineer the heating heat design engineer not the salesperson because he or she it's like double glazing sales people they're just going through the numbers they don't understand the, the the you know the fabric of the house and the the detailed design that's got to go into your heating system to make sure it'll work successfully and properly so how did you actually accomplish to actually get the heat engineer to come out because we went through a similar process as you we had probably six different installers come and actually quote us one or two of them were actually the company owners so they did have um, a level of knowledge when it came to uh, systems like that but typically you do get sales guys that come out how were you able to convince them to actually bring out a heat engineer with them to put together a, a comprehensive quotation or proposal to actually deliver something for your property that would work? So it's a, it's a really good question, Mars, because especially as we were sort of bumping into COVID and there was a lot more remote stuff. But actually, in a lot of cases, I was able to do Zoom calls a bit like this, but through my you know iPhone type calls. And I would walk the person around the home. I'd already thought about where the external part of the air source heat pump could go from a logic point of view i could show them what where the current oil boiler was where the power comes into the house i knew the fact that we had a 100 amp circuit coming into the house i knew we had easy access into the loft space above the kitchen so that pipe you know where pipe work could flow we currently had a hot water tank and as part of the replacement we replaced that um, with a new one from a company called mixergy i think i had two two people physically walk around the house with masks on so that's why i got quite good at walking around with <laughs> with my iphone how many 
many uh, quotations did you end up getting in the end? How many different companies did you end up speaking to? I probably spoke to seven or eight and got quotes for about five, I think. From the seven or eight companies that came um, to quote, from the five that actually end up did quoting, how different were the solutions that they were recommending or trying to sell you as in the kilowatts of the heat pump, etc.? The power of the, the heat pumps were similar. It was actually the differences between the makes of heat pumps. So I had quotes for Nibi and Mitsubishi and Daikin twice, Samsung, and I can't remember whether there was a Panasonic one as well. They were all about 12, 15 kilowatts systems so quite large large machines the company i ended up going working with a eco bubble their um, owner and, and lead engineer martin <laughs> um he he'd rec- he recommended dakin he'd worked with dakin before and they got a relatively new product what's called a high temperature um, air source heat pump he designed the system to allow the, the the air source heat pump to run on its own and then connect it in through a buffer tank connect it into the the existing radiators and hot water system the conversation is that they like to run free as it were um, and, and, the, and the, the separate the hydraulic separation allows them allows it to do that so you ultimately got six or seven uh, companies to come and quote you you eventually selected ecobubble why did you opt for them? It was building confidence in the in Martin as the as the owner and the the, the technical lead, and also building confidence in Dakin over other air source heat pumps. The quote for Nibi was about two grand more, uh, and they everybody talked about Nibi. It's a Swedish company, I believe, um, and they, they 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 said it's a better quality product. How does that make it better? Does it deliver um, a, a higher COP, or uh, so that's a coefficient of performance, or seasonal coefficient of performance, or does it require less servicing, or what what makes it? And they, I couldn't get any specifics about that. So why was I going to spend an extra two or three grand on a box that didn't necessarily deliver any benefit? Martin from Ecobug, was he'd worked in the industry for many years and, and had, had worked previously even with Mitsubishi and felt that, 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 the, that the support that Dakin gave was second to none. And that's brought borne out by the fact that you can take out an annual service contract with them and fix price it for 10 years. The price seemed reasonable. Uh, for the sol- solution that was going to be installed. I-, I wasn't aware that you put a high temperature air source heat pump in. So are you running your heat pump at a flow rate of around 45 degrees or are you t- uh, often tempted to maybe go above that to actually take the the rads that are slightly smaller out of the equation? I think we're probably running at 55 at the moment, which you can now, all the uh, all the uh, heating engineers and the air source heat pump experts go, no, 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 no. <laughs> shaking their heads and dismissing this video. It's part of the the MCS calculations, there's a, a calculation that shows what, how much um, what your energy usage will be based on the heat demand and the heat loss. The prediction for us is about seven and a half thousand kilowatt hours a year. Since it was installed in April, we should have used based on that calculation, because it shows it by month as well. We should have used about a thousand kilowatt hours. And so far, we're at about 750. So we're under the predicted. Good. We're we're running it at the moment as if the system is an as a boiler. So we have a nest heat control in the in the hallway. The heating comes on at uh, seven o'clock in the morning. But the nest recognises it's an air source heat pump rather than oil boiler, rather than gas boiler or whatever. You have you set that up so therefore it starts the heating process earlier. So the aim is to to, to run it as a as if it was a boiler for a year to see what how we do, and then I might switch over and take the nest out of the circuit, and we'll then use the heat compensation curve within the, the air source heat pumps intelligence. So it certainly sounds like um, you said you mentioned before that your wife is an accountant and um, you being uh, in I IT. have to justify everything. No, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think that you're, you're quite a meticulous household when it comes to expenses. So um, tell us about um, the conversations that you've had with your wife with regards to what's happening in the energy crisis and, and the and, and electricity tariffs. At the moment, you're on a really good tariff with Octopus, but are you concerned that that might change next year? And um, you know, do you think that um, you know that would affect your running costs overall with your heat pump? I don't think we've I don't think we specifically talked about it. We're only paying even the daytime rate is only about fourteen and a half pence. Wow, yeah, that's good. Yeah, very lucky. Um, that is really good. 
the RHI is coming to an end in, in April, April uh, 2022. And then they are uh, going to be replacing it with the grant, the £5,000 uh, grant for air source and £6,000 for ground source. Um, but based on how much you spent as a homeowner, do you, would that have incentivized you to, to invest as much as you did? And would you have still uh, gone through with that financial commitment if you were doing it next year with no RHI? I think we still would have done because the oil price is continuing to rise. Air source heat pump costs will come down a little bit. Octopus have set up an academy to train people and they've talked about getting air source heat pump prices down to, to five thousand pounds which would, would be fabulous but i still think you know we've got to do our bit to try and reduce co2 emissions and i would still have invested um it would have been a longer term payback but uh, i still think there would have been a, an opportunity i assume that you're on single phase electricity and your consumer box is probably limited to 100 amps so you've got the heat pump a high temperature heat pump and two electric vehicles hmm. how much uh, is that enough on that because we've been advised that we might struggle to actually get uh, an ev charging point added to, to our consumer box we've also got a 100 amp limit what's your take on that western power are our a network provider you have to apply for each of the the changes the property in the estate were 20 years old we've got our own transformer a little transformer on the estate so the circuits to each of the houses must be all quite modern and new. When we had the, the we got a seven kilowatt charging point for the for the EVs, and we've only got one. You know, we just switch switch between the two. For the air source heat pump, we had to, again EcoBubble applied to um, Western Power because it's not just about the the power you're drawing. It's when the thing starts and stops. It can have an impact. It turns out to be really complicated <laughs> engineering and 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 physics problems associated with the. Uh, electric supply who knew we also have a you know a electric hob electric oven a dishwasher washing machine we would probably struggle to add another seven kilowatt charger my next investment will be something called vehicle to grid i can't justify it by a tesla battery or um, a number of other companies supply batteries for homes and i can't justify that on a payback basis but i've got a you know a 30 kilowatt battery in my honda and a 70 odd 77 kilowatt 73 kilowatt hour battery in my hyundai and that's sitting there for 90 percent of the time and not driving anywhere so i would then be able to use the battery from my electric vehicle to, to run the house and then charge the bat battery up overnight on cheap electricity and that will drive my energy costs down so before we uh close up today julian can you just tell us i know that the that everybody wants the power of hindsight. It's it's the one thing, the one magic superpower that I would love to have. So uh, with that in mind and hindsight, what, if anything, would you have done differently? Whether that's, you know, just process in maybe, you know, research or selecting a supplier or actually the, the machine you chose or how you would have had it fitted. Was there anything that you look back on and think, OK, that was a really interesting learning curve and that's probably something I do a little bit differently next time? I don't think I've done, I'd we do anything necessarily different. I, I was really pleased with the work that EcoBubble did. It's, it's still quite early days for the air source, our air source heat pump. The temperatures are dropping and obviously you are quite comfortable with the, with the temperature of the house. Yes, even, even my wife Jackie said, yeah, it's, it's, we're doing all right at the moment. I think the sitting room's warmer. Mm, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Magic words. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, Julian. I think it's been really interesting to hear the perspectives of another homeowner, uh -huh. especially from from our side. Um, during these interviews, it's kind of we're speaking to all the experts, but it's really nice to speak to another homeowner that's actually had real life experience living with a heat pump and, and a positive experience. Yeah, and I look forward to your um, to your experience this winter, <laughs> and we'd love to have you back i think in the spring uh spring to summer uh, so that you can tell us what your first uh, winter was like with a heat pump and hopefully everything ran smoothly and you had a lovely warm cozy christmas uh, thank you i think it very much will be uh, i think you should be congratulated for the work that you've done um initially on your home site and then and then creating the the, 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 sp the specific heat pump site um to, to give um idiots like me some some further information and, and start a community that, that shares that information it's really useful uh, and you should be congratulated but uh, thanks very much you've been a great chat oh thank thanks you so much, much julian. julian thanks so much and Cheers. we'll we'll see you in 2022 on the other side <laughs> yes all the best bye Take care. bye, bye.